Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I am also your local technical consultant for Altium. And today, we are gonna be diving into a somewhat contentious topic and definitely a question I've seen more than once. And that question is, is it okay to put a cutout below an inductor in a switching regulator? Personally, I've designed many boards. The people who work for me have designed many boards all of which have had ground beneath an inductor in a switching regulator. And I believe that the evidence supports the use of ground below a switching regulator versus placing a cutout. So we're gonna dive in and see why that's the case right now. So this question about whether or not to put ground below the inductor in a switching regulator relates to generation of noise and whether or not that noise can be received elsewhere on the board, which would then cause interference with other circuits on the board. So that is kind of the heart of this question about placing a cutout below the switching regulator or to place a solid ground region below the entire switching regulator. The answer to this question depends on a few different things. Now, personally, in the switching regulators that I have worked on, which have all been low current and have all been used in digital systems or even in some RF or mixed signal systems, that switching regulator was running at low enough current and with low enough magnetic field that we never had a problem. Also, the inductor type, especially the inductor types that have been used in our regulators, matters as well. So the type of inductor, such as like a wire wound inductor, could be shielded. And that shielding helps reduce the leakage of magnetic field from that inductor package. Some inductors, like toroidal inductors, are intentionally designed to confine the magnetic field generated in the inductor to a circular region, so basically creating a closed loop of field, and the idea is to reduce that leakage flux. Other inductors will have different orientation, so the orientation can matter as well, because if the inductor is on its side versus oriented vertically, the magnetic field will point a different direction. And then when it is received elsewhere in the circuit or elsewhere in the PCB, uh, the strength could be different in that region where it's received. So all of these factors really matter when we're talking about inductors above ground in a switching regulator. So what we're gonna do is look at a specific case where we have an inductor and we're just gonna assume for the moment that the magnetic field is being generated vertically because we have a vertically oriented inductor in a package. That's what we're gonna look at, but the same concepts could apply to a horizontally oriented inductor, same type of argument. Okay, so let's take a look here at our very familiar side view of a PCB. So let's just assume for a moment that we're dealing with a two layer board. And up here, I have some copper, I've got some other copper here. Maybe this is our switch node. And then up here on the top layer, I have my inductor package. So this is my inductor package. Uh, I'm just gonna write it out. This is our inductor. And we're just gonna assume that the field is being oriented uh, vertically, meaning that we have a coil in here that is essentially you know, wound like this in this plane. And so the magnetic field would be generated in this direction. So the structure would look like this. We have a cutout that basically passes all the way through the substrate. And all we have here touching the copper is just the leads on the inductor package. So you would basically solder right here. And then that's gonna attach to these two pieces of copper. So the magnetic field that is being generated uh, from this inductor actually has to form complete concentric loops. So you're gonna have some of that field that points this direction along this portion of the copper, and maybe the board edge terminates over here. You're gonna have other field lines that might wrap all the way around and come back and make this big concentric circle. And then same thing over here, this is all symmetric. So you've got these big loops of magnetic field, and then you've got another magnetic loop here. Maybe it comes into this portion of the surface. Now up on the top layer, what these loops actually do is they don't terminate at copper. So that's not the way the magnetic field works. The magnetic field works uh, by actually going parallel to the copper and terminating parallel and then wrapping around and creating a complete concentric circle. So these are basically what your field lines look like from the inductor that is placed on this top layer. So 
Why does this all matter, right? How does the noise arise from this particular situation? Well, what's gonna happen here is, first, you would have an eddy current from these particular field lines. So we have a changing magnetic field due to the switching current in the inductor. The changing magnetic field can induce an eddy current in this particular portion of the board. The direction of that eddy current is gonna be such that the field that it generates is due to a current flowing this direction, and then that field is going to point upwards, like this. And then same thing over here. So the field would uh, force a current to go opposite, basically like this, and then we'd have a reactionary magnetic field that basically counteracts the field that is created by this inductor package. Now, if this were a shielded inductor, you could still have all these same field lines, they'd just be less intense. The whole point behind a shielded inductor is to try and confine all these field lines within the inductor package and then reduce the strength of the field measured outside the package. So the whole point behind the eddy current thing here is that the eddy current creates a magnetic field, so a secondary magnetic field, we'll call this B2, that counteracts the initial magnetic field from the inductor, we'll call it B sub I. And so in that way, you can think of it as reducing the inductance or creating an effective inductance for this inductor package that is slightly lower than the rated value. That is because the magnetic fields are counteracting here and that's just due to Lenz's law. Now, what's happening here in this cutout? Well, the entire idea behind placing a cutout here is to try and eliminate the eddy current below the inductor package. So that is the supposed reasoning for placing this cutout. Now, the reality is that if you just look at the cross section here, so let's erase some of this for just a moment. So if you look at the cross sectional area, and let's say that this is a plane layer on the bottom. And so I've got a big plane layer, but then I've got a square cutout here. And I now fill this square cutout with magnetic field, B. What's gonna happen? Well, I've got a closed loop of conductor that's surrounding all of this magnetic field. So the magnetic flux through this closed loop is still going to generate a current. And it's going to generate a current that flows in the opposite direction. And it's going to counteract this initial inducing magnetic field, again, through Lenz's law. So that is also going to lower the effective inductance. But there's another problem here. You're now allowing the switching magnetic field to propagate into the interior layers of the board. So it could also induce noise in other circuits nearby. When you place this ground cutout, you are now exposing any circuit that's routed on an internal layer to this switching magnetic field or the switching current and the subsequent magnetic field that's generated. You are subjecting it to that potential noise source. So this can create a big EMI problem. And that is one of the reasons why you would like to eliminate this cutout from the inductor. Now, you'll notice here, if I just were to, you know, fill this in with ground, let's say, and then I'm able to fill this in with ground, or fill it in with whatever else, maybe I'm routing on the back layer, whatever it is, um, or I just fill this in with solid copper, let's say, on the next layer. So here's another option, right? Let's say I'm in a four-layer board, right? This is sig slash power. This is ground. And then let's say layer four and layer three are mirrors of that. So we've got layer four, sig slash power. And then here we've got ground. So now if I place solid ground here, instead of placing a cutout all the way through, I've now just helped to shield everything on the bottom layer from this magnetic field that's being generated by this inductor. I have created some shielding and that's very beneficial for everything on the back layer. Now, if I also, let's say, had routing on these internal layers, I could then also shield all of those circuits from this inductor thanks to the presence of this ground. This is a pretty powerful argument for putting the ground here because guess what? Remember when we had this cutout here? You were gonna have a current that's generated in this conductor anyways. So you're gonna just have it here instead of have it down here. I, in my opinion, doesn't really matter so much. So there's one other counter argument to this 
and it's uh, a one, one reason that people cite to totally remove ground from below a switching regulator, and that is due to the capacitance between ground and this switching node. So this switching node, if we look at it from, let's say we just zoom in over here, and we have some copper that I'm gonna draw right here. So this is our switching node, let's say, SW. This is ground. And then we have this all filled in with our PCB substrate material. What type of structure is this? We have two conductors. They're separated by an insulator. That means this is essentially a big capacitor, okay? So there will be some capacitance that you end up creating between the switching node on the top layer and then the ground on the next layer. Now, how big is that capacitance? Does that capacitance really matter? What are you comparing this with? You have to compare this capacitance with something else. And in fact, in a switching regulator, the capacitance that you have to compare this with is the capacitance of your switching elements. In this case, they are normally MOSFETs. The capacitance uh, to ground on the low side MOSFET in a switching regulator is typically on the order of maybe one to 10 nanofarads. Now, a switching regulator uh, that has this switching node above ground could have as small as maybe 10 picofarads to maybe 100 picofarads. And it really depends. This is a big range, but it depends on the size of this switching node. So if you make this switching node bigger, this capacitance between the switching node and ground is also going to be bigger. So, the purported argument against putting the ground here says that, well, you create this capacitance here, so you're gonna decrease the power conversion efficiency because some of that power is gonna pass between the switching node and ground rather than passing through the inductor. But take a look at how big this capacitance is. It's actually very small. Your switching elements are gonna have no problem controlling the current flow in this switching regulator because look at how big this capacitance is. This is really where the low impedance element is. It's not this capacitance between the switching node and ground. So what that means is you can effectively ignore that capacitance. It's actually not anything you need to worry about, especially with modern MOSFETs. Another reason that this is actually good is because you create this capacitance here and you actually reduce the parasitic capacitance to some other circuit or trace that's on the same layer as the switching node. So we talked about this in our recent video on how to reduce parasitic capacitance or control parasitic capacitance. There's also an article that I'm gonna have in the description for this video. Go ahead and read that article to read more about this whole thing. But that is another reason to put the ground here is it actually shields anything else on the same layer as the switching node from the switching node. So all of these are arguments for putting the ground below the inductor rather than having a big cutout here. It's all about providing shielding. All right, everybody, so this is a little bit of a contentious topic. I'm sure there are people who have said, I always put a cutout here and I've never had a problem. And I'm one of those guys who will tell you, hey, I've never put a cutout here and I've never had a problem. So I'd love to hear your experience with working with cutouts below inductors in switching regulators. My view is you shouldn't do it. However, we'd love to get your comments and your questions about it. So please feel free to leave a comment about this in the comments section. Definitely would love to hear from anyone who's watching this and has a good opinion about this. All right, thanks everybody. I hope you uh, understood all of this. And if you don't, there are some articles in the description that will elaborate on all of this. Go ahead and check out those articles. And then of course, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Help us hack that YouTube algorithm and uh, you'll be able to see all of our upcoming videos as they come out. All right, thanks again, everybody. And uh, last but not least, definitely don't forget to call your fabricator.